Hi, it's Hayley Merritt here. This is the first training video I'll be showing you and it's all about perfecting your blocking technique for double blocks. This particular blocking tutorial, which is part of our extensive video training library, is around 22 minutes long. I've given you a sneak preview here which runs for about 5 minutes. I've structured these video tutorials in three parts. So you'll get a thorough understanding of not only how to perform the drill, but what to look for in your player's technique, how to correct your player's form and build on their skills. Basically from the ground up, from the fundamental skills through to advanced plays and tactics. So I'll talk you through the drill first, so you'll have an understanding of what the players are doing. Then we'll cross over to coach Carl Lim, and Carl will run you through some live action with his players. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reply to the email and I'll be happy to help you out. An impenetrable double block is a great skill to have in your team's arsenal. It severely limits your opponent's options and more often than not will force them to put the ball where you want it. The purpose of this drill is to practice the correct blocking techniques for double blocks and build your team's ability to be able to consistently deliver seamless, impassable double blocks. Make sure you watch for drift. Drift is when the middle blocker jumps too early and drifts while in the air to the outside blocker. Drift will cause the block to be less effective. It also leaves a seam in between the two blockers and therefore an opportunity for the opposition. The middle blocker needs to bump up against the outside blocker and then jump. Timing is critical and only lots of practice will get it right. Remember that the outside blocker should be the one who determines the position of the block on the court. The middle blocker's job is to bump up to the outside blocker and then jump. It's better for the outside blocker to start closer to the centre of the court and then move to the outside after reading the placement of the ball by the opposition setter. The reason for this is if the outside blocker starts too far on the side, he can't move into court because the middle blocker has already started moving towards the outside blocker and they would potentially run into each other. So it's far better for the outside blocker to start closer to the centre then move to the outside and the middle blocker just follows him. You'll see exactly how and why this is important when you see the coach's video critique for this drill. That's the real gold in being able to demonstrate the proper execution of these skills for you on video because it makes it much simpler and easier for you to understand and apply these skills to your own game. The coach passes the ball to the setter. The setter sets the ball to one of the outside catchers. The blockers have to form an effective double block. The blockers don't know where the setter is going to set the ball, so they have to get into practice either moving quickly to the left or to the right. Repeat the drill a couple of times and then rotate the players through. Okay, the, the aim of the next drill is to uh, demonstrate that a middle blocker will make choices um, depending on where the ball is going to go. Um, same as at the last drill, middle player will move to either the left or the right side to form a, a double block. Um, as a setter, the choices are there, forward set or back set. And what we want is to be able to get good form on the double block, depending where, where, where the ball's going. Uh, like I emphasise, small blockers, swing blocking is also uh, acceptable. Um, but the bigger blockers, generally the, the side steps, um, is, is pretty much good enough to, to be able to form a neat double block and hoping the, the, the player would either hit past past the blockers or we'll, we'll, we'll get some hands to the ball. Um, so we'll demonstrate now on how we um, control our middle blockers and, and the outside blockers forming a nice neat block. 
middle players, you, you'll stay for two balls. Yep. Like the, like the last drill, we'll have the, uh, the non-blocker will fall back into... Okay, so, so what we're looking for here is the, uh, a neat block between the outside blocker and the middle blocker. Okay, blockers, we still got too far apart from each other. Okay, make sure we start a metre and a half into court, outside blocker, into court, so we get either a side step or we get a cross step and block. So we want closer in together, closer in. I'll get Alex and also Kevin to come closer into the court. Okay. Okay, as a setter, we try and keep the uh, middle player guessing to where the ball's going. Okay, guys, we still got outside blocker, middle player. You've got about a metre gap between where the ball should be. So we wanted to close up a bit more. So, middle blocker, the aim is not to float into a blocking position, but get there, bump up shoulder to shoulder, and push over without floating in the air. Okay? Okay guys, grab a, grab a drink, have a break. Okay, as you notice, blocking is very uh, tedious. We want players to really focus on what they need to do, make it really simple, but also make it effective for the team. Blocking wins a lot of points in terms of probably less effort, but more rewarding in terms of uh, shutting a player down. But to have a good blocking team, Okay, you need three players to be organised at the net. A lot of talking involved, a lot of quick steps, rather than just hoping that you'll, you'll get a shutout. Okay, you've got to be tough at it, hard hands, you've got to focus on what you need to do. Blockers, make sure we seal. Outside blockers and middle are joined together and we push, hands spread and hard. Okay, so we'll continue the same drill. 